guys and welcome to Academic Coordinates. I am Musino Vuyometh and today we're excited to present to you Daiki who is doing his PhD in chemistry, his PhD in chemistry. He will be telling you all about that in this video. Welcome. Hello everyone, welcome to Academic Coordinates. Today I'm joined by Daiki, he's doing um, his PhD in chemistry, so that's quite interesting. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So basically, um, Daiki, just tell us, man, um, who you are. Um, you know, just tell us a bit about yourself. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, ach, yeah, Dirkie, Dirkie Meiber is my surname. Um, I, yeah, I'm from uh, from Malmesbury, actually, which is not too far away from Santa mm -hmm. uh, It's like 40 minutes north from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's where I grew up, wasn't, uh, Swartland High School, um, yeah, um, and yeah, I've been uh, in Santa Bors for ten years now. It's my tenth year that I'm actually studying, and and my last year that I'm studying. And so next year I'll be working, um, and yeah, I'm doing my PhD in chemistry. Uh, I started off with BC mathematical sciences, and then along took a journey to get to where I'm now. And uh, yeah, I have a passion for chemistry and for uh, medicine, and that's kind of the direction that I want to work in. Okay. Yeah. And also, like, how did you grow up? Um, did you have like a big family, like siblings, a lot of siblings, or were you just the yeah. only one in the in the family? Yeah, we are three. I've got a younger sister, older brother, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, grew up really close. It was uh, mostly it was just my mom. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, my dad wasn't that involved with the family, so mm -hmm. mom raised us um, mostly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, um, but it was just the three of us and my mom. So we, we grew up quite close together um, because, yeah. Uh, okay, so if you look at your upbringing in general, is there anything that is, um, I don't know, something interesting about your upbringing? You know, is there anything that stood out, you know, as you were like growing up that. Mm. You will never forget. Um, your, I think there's many things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. I, th I think in terms of like me growing up, things that stood out. Well, there are good things, there are bad things. <laughs> um, yeah. Some of the, some of, I'll say, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of focusing on the good things, I think it was interesting how. Um, uh, when my parents separated and my mom mm -hmm. went on her own, mm -hmm. how there were there were a lot of people that supported us, um, mm -hmm. and people that didn't know us. Um, and I think um, that was um, yeah quite um, interesting to see. Like yeah. like yeah, there was a lot of people that that really supported us. Um, mm -hmm. Some family some family members really supported us, but also a lot of people just from outside, just generally mm -hmm. seeing that this mom needs help raising mm -hmm. her children. Yes. Uh, that would really help. And um, and uh, in school, I had uh, really good um, uh, teachers, mm -hmm. um, really, really supportive teachers, um, which is something that is often very lacking. But yeah. if you have that kind of teachers that really support you as child that needs to grow up that's really something that really carried me yeah. oh wow interesting okay so now coming to your high school mm. you know what i'm saying yeah so there are different people in high school you you get the nerds you know you get the naughty ones yeah. the troublemakers and stuff like that so which crew did you belong in in high school ah it's a tricky question <laughs> uh like i would it's I don't know. I don't think I ever found myself in any of those groups, really. Mm -hmm. I think I was a bit of a, not not a loner, but I I I um, I would, I would probably put myself in the nerd group, <laughs> but not really. Um, yeah. Like, it's like a mix between the nerds and the populars, but I didn't really oh. fit into any of them mm -hmm. completely. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so what are you known for? Were you known for being a nerd or? The well, popular one, or I was I was well, <laughs> I was known for being good at maths. Okay, <laughs> but I was not necessarily. I was also in, uh, a lot into sports, so yeah, I wasn't. 
I was good at math, but I wouldn't be classed as the nerd because I was also a bit sporty. So. Oh, okay, okay. What, 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 what sports did you play? I just played hockey. Yeah. Just hockey. Okay. But I also did like athletics. Just okay. Like, I was like, like pro, but I did uh, like long distance running, and so. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So were you, were you, were you acing those those athletics, or were you um, like the I, second last every time? <laughs> I, I did well, but I didn't yeah. like, like, on the like room, like um. Yeah, like my I did well, but I wasn't like pro. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, like my friends would run like three and a half minutes kilometers, yeah. but I would do my five kilometer, five yes. minutes or like four, four and a half minutes per kilometer. Like, yeah. I, I wasn't like a pro, but I I, mm-hmm. I, I did. I was probably uh, I was one of the fittest in my hockey team, but I wasn't necessarily the best hockey player. I still made the first team, but I wasn't like Boland and stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah. I was like I was like there, but not like, I was the best, but I was like. I was good, goodish. Okay, if that makes okay. sense. <laughs> so speaking about, you said you were good in math. So I'm assuming mm. that you're not one of those people who crammed their way out of school. So you actually studied in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Did I actually study in high school? Um, yeah. Um, some yeah, I studied, mm-hmm. um, but I wasn't always like the best student. I didn't always do my accounting homework oh yeah i always did my maths homework but i never did my accounting homework but i i would always do my accounting homework the period before accounting or that okay. morning that yeah. i had accounting like i wasn't like I wasn't always the most disciplined when it came to doing my homework oh, okay but okay. when it got to the last minute i would, do, I would pro- procrastinate quite a bit when i yeah. got to the last minute um I would get the job done in the end. So okay. So I call, I'd say like I was a pro, pro, uh, like a strategic procrastinator. <laughs> yeah, procrastinate just to get the pressure up, but not yeah. too much that you don't get the work done. Okay. You know? <laughs> so it seems to me that accounting was I don't know not one of your favorite subjects. You know, nah. was this grade ten or was this grade nine? Yeah, that was ten to well, yeah, ten to twelve. 10 to 12 okay. 12. Okay. Yeah. And what motivated the the subject you chose then? Um, yeah, well, I had to choose um, uh, between accounting and um, uh, um, uh, um, CAD, was the, no, it wasn't CAD, it was um, IGO, which is Ingenieursgrafiker and Werf, um, Engineering Design, okay, um, cool. I can't, I can't, I'm not sure what the English is, but um, mm-hmm. it's basically it's, um, um, drawing, engineering oh, yes. drawing. Oh, yeah. EGD. Yeah, EGD, mm-hmm. yeah. Yes, that's the one. Um, so I had to choose between accounting and EGD. Mm-hmm. Um, the other subject that I chose biology and, and uh, physical sciences. Yeah. Uh, but that was in a different category than the X side. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, or oh, the, the, uh, the um, accounting. Um, uh, so I had to choose between EGD and accounting. And I wanted to get the business edge yes. um, because I thought that would really help me in the future. Okay. And I think it, it does. Um, so. I actually would have preferred to take EGD because I loved drawing and I loved yes. um, uh, engineering, but the accounting benefited me much more. Would have benefited me much more in the future, okay. having that kind of business edge. So even though I didn't enjoy it that much, I, f- I figured it would be a better choice. Oh, uh, and okay, it was. Cool. Yeah, okay. it was. All right, so I'm sure you sort of eventually loved accounting and then you're doing your homework <laughs> yeah, and uh, stuff. <laughs> sorry. Okay, and then lastly now, with regards to your, uh, to your high school, what stood out for you in high school? You know, what is that? Um, what stood out for me in high school? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, yeah, once again, many things. Um, mm-hmm. But just, I, I would, once again, I would like point to my teachers. Um, yes who were, uh, was really a blessing because not, not everyone has that, but to have mm. that kind of support yeah. and being pushed to excel in your studies and your work and also the, the kind of environment and the, the people and the friends um, that I had and uh, um, yeah, I was just really lucky to be in that environment where yes. you are really encouraged to excel and mm. to um, um, yeah, basically wow. And just from my my um, teachers, especially. Or, mm-hmm. uh, okay, you know. so basically, um, your high school was here in Cape Town, right? Um, yeah, Malmesbury. Uh, okay. Right high school, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So tell us now about your transition, you know, from high school to university. Mm. Any interesting thing, you know, um, on <laughs> your coming to university? I think everyone has got a story about, you know, their first day, maybe 
I cried, I couldn't find my classes and stuff like that. So just tell us about that a bit. Yo, um, any interesting story? Well, firstly, I could say that um, I was so excited to go to university. It was this like transition yeah. and suddenly I had this freedom to mm -hmm. like make of my life that what I want to make of it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously not all that easy always. Um, yeah. I had to save a lot and I was at NASFAS, which was amazing, uh, which, uh, you know, without which I wouldn't have be able to get to where I am. And you also know NASFAS doesn't cover all the things. So, mm. you know, I had to save a lot. I had to be very careful with my money and things. So, so yes, there was this freedom, mm -hmm. but also, um, you know, um, I couldn't also enjoy everything that everyone else enjoyed because yes. I, I didn't have a lot of money. I had enough. I had enough, but mm -hmm. I didn't have all that money that everyone else has. Oh, okay. um, but coming here, it was mostly the excitement and this just feeling of you know, being able to like do my life um, and figure out life for myself. And um, any like funny any stories? Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, there was both this feeling of excitement, but also a lot of insecurity. I'm not gonna lie. There was okay. a lot of insecurity as to. What am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. Where am I going? Why am I studying what I'm studying? Um, mm -hmm. uh, what friends, what people should I associate myself with? Yes. Um, uh, and who I am I? And like, yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of those questions also came up. So both the freedom and excitement mm -hmm. and like a lot of soul searching yeah. <laughs> taking place. <laughs> Roughly yes. answers your question. <laughs> yeah, 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 it does. Um, and also, um, so you, 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 you did high school here and then out of all the universities in South oh, Africa, yeah. or in Africa, or in the world, <laughs> you chose to be a, a Mati, you know what I'm saying? Uh, why mm. did you choose to be a Mati above all the universities that you could have went to? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, um, uh, well, there's many reasons, but the, the easiest answer to that is it's close. <laughs> it's 40 <laughs> minutes away from home. Yeah. Um, well, that's not the only answer. It's also that it's just a really good university, mm -hmm. and with it being so close to to home, it's a very obvious choice. Why would you go away if you've got um, such a good university so close to home? Yes. With um, especially what different departments, what I know uh, for our mathematics and our chemistry department is just excellent, mm -hmm. one of the best. Um, so. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. Why would I? Very much just. If you want to study chemistry, then yeah, uh, yeah, Stellenbosch is yeah, it is one of it's one of the uh, top places where you want to be. Um, mm -hmm. There are other universities that does r really well as well, but Stellenbosch is one of those. Okay. Um, so it just made sense. Wow. <laughs> not, not only because it's close, but because it's an excellent academically an excellent university. So oh wow, yeah, interesting. And also now, um, you said you, 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 you did your BSc in chemistry, right? Yes, well, so, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that was mathematical science, but um, all the chemistry modules were housed under that BSc. Um, I did. Well, BSc in mathematical sciences with mm -hmm. biomaths and biochem. So that mm -hmm. was my undergrad, but I did chemistry extra. Okay. Uh, because it wasn't part of my course, but I wanted to do chemistry. Yes, yes. So it was a bit of a... A uh, tough one. Yeah. I had to do the four chemistry modules yes. extra. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So basically, um, 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 what motivated you choosing um, that field? You, you know, mm. you chose. Um, as you're speaking, you spoke of your interest in chemistry, and uh. I think there was still that love of mathematics, you know, from you. Yeah. So I don't know what motivated that kind of choice. Um, well, since I was like very little, mm -hmm. um, since I can remember, I've always told my parents I want to make medicine. Not oh. that I ex exactly knew what that meant or mm -hmm. what it would look like. Yeah. I was just very curious and interested in mm -hmm. like the pills that you swallow that make you better. Cool. Uh, <laughs> and so since I can remember, I thought one day I want to, you know, develop or work on new medicines. Yes. And um, that's why I started studying biochemistry and biomathematics. Mm -hmm. I didn't do the pure chemistry course because I really loved mathematics and yes. I didn't want to let go of that yet. Mm -hmm. um, so I started undergrad with a biomaths and biochem yes. uh, because that was a logical sense if you want to go into medicine but also mm -hmm. keep a mathematics background. 
from that I realized when I started studying I realized I actually wanted it's it's uh, going into pure chemistry is more what I want to do uh, and that's why I sort of made the transition to pure chemistry mm -hmm. and um, so then I had the maths and the biochem and the chemistry background which could would lead me in the direction that I want to be and where I'm oh, at now okay. so yeah. okay that's 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 kind of cool um so basically now Daiki can you you know in simple words yes. such that um someone's mom you know from Joburg or from Eastern Cape can understand what in the world is chemistry what do you guys do yeah um so chemistry has got to do with um molecules and atoms so mm -hmm. What atoms is, it's the smallest thing mm -hmm. you can see. So if you were yes. to zoom in there, then, and you zoom in and you zoom in, like very, you zoom in like you have a microscope or something, mm -hmm. and you zoom in all the way, the smallest single thing that you can see mm -hmm. is called an atom. It's, yes. like, it's like this round little ball thingy. Mm -hmm. It's very, 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 very tiny and everything is made up of atoms everything you see is made up of atoms um, and you get different types of atoms you get a hydrogen and an oxygen atom and a carbon atom and and those atoms in different combinations make up everything that you see around you um, and yeah and so if you study those atoms and you know how, how those atoms behave and how they work and you figure out how you can manipulate those atoms then you can do cool stuff oh cool <laughs> that's cool. chemistry is I, wow. I would say that's a neat summary of chemistry okay so um you mentioned that you loved like um, medicine yeah i mean sorry um making pills you're interested in the pills that you would make mm. so um there was a question from one of the students who was like um, um isn't pharmacy a better option then for that oh, that is you can you can go that's a good direction to take if you want to go into mm -hmm. um, doing research on chemistry. You can also go that direction. Yeah. Um, if you study pharmacy, typically you can become a pharmacist, mm -hmm. which uh, they don't always have the the um, the go that deep into chemistry as you do if you just do your honors in chemistry yes. or you just do pure chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, pharmacists typically will prescribe medicine at a pharmacy, or yes. run a pharmacy. But th that's also a good basis. If you want to go into medicine, go into research in medicine, you can also follow that direction, yes. Okay, cool. I didn't go that direction, but you can also. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, let, just tell us now, um, there was also a question about, in your own words now, what is the difference, you know, between yes. chemistry and chemical engineering? Ah, yeah, that's a very good question, and a lot of people uh, don't always get that exactly right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, chemical engineering, it's, it's in Stellenbosch, it's nowadays described as process engineering. They don't mm -hmm. really talk about chemical engineering anymore. It's process yes. engineering. And I think that name is a better description. Mm -hmm. um, typically, how I would explain it, and it's, it's a very sim simplified version, but what I would say is the, um, chemis in chemistry, you would develop a process of making a new medicine or making a new molecule that is that's going to make you better um, yes. making a new medicine so sometimes that's a 30 40 step process we mm -hmm. have to do various little reactions and steps to get to your final product yes. um, developing that process often takes years and years um, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of research a lot of science goes into developing that process mm -hmm. um, but it's a different story uh, to make that in a small scale in the lab than mm -hmm. to make it in a big scale um, mm -hmm. that you can manufacture. So the process engineer yeah. will take that process and it'll upscale it. Okay, <laughs> so he can So it'll build machines and, uh, and stuff and mm -hmm. pipelines and he'll build this whole process. Yes. Um, uh, it'll manufacture this whole system that mm -hmm. can make your molecule, your medicine uh, in bulk because mm -hmm. <laughs> the chemist cannot do that yeah. so the chemist okay. develops the process mm -hmm. the chemical engineer um, uh, takes the process and makes it big so you can make a lot of it <laughs> okay yeah. cool okay cool and what were the difficult um, um, parts of your of your field of study you know if you can just reflect on that um, difficult parts um, yeah uh, but 
I would say there's two parts. <laughs> there's, <laughs> one is the, the actual work. Yes. Um, the other part is what happens outside of work mm -hmm. because often that is the more difficult part. For example, yes. um, when you do your honors, especially in, um, well, especially in honors actually, mm -hmm. there's a lot of, um, uh, what's the word, um, uh, critique. Yes. There's a lot of critique. Yeah. which is necessary because um, you need to because if you be, for example um, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> sorry um, yeah so so learning to handle um, pressure and mm -hmm. criticism is very important if you want to go forward and I would mm -hmm. say that was probably my biggest struggle uh, not even I wouldn't even say that my studies <laughs> or the work the work was difficult as well but yeah. the most difficult part of my studies was learning to take um, criticism and take it in a positive manner not mm -hmm. to take it personally mm -hmm. but to take it in a positive manner mm -hmm. and learn from it um, yeah. or someone would look at your work and ask you why did you do that in that way and mm -hmm. or sometimes they'll just tell you you did that but that's actually very wrong you can't mm -hmm. do it that way um, and not to say um, not to take that personally and say, well, they're attacking my character because oh, they're, they're, just, they're just pointing out that your work is not fine. Yes. Um, and to learn to handle that is so important mm -hmm. because um, you need that highly critical review from outsiders mm -hmm. to be able to develop yourself. Yes, um, yes. So handling critique is very important in this whole process of learning. Oh, okay, um, cool. Obviously, the work was difficult as well, but that's, that's, <laughs> It's a different story. Yeah. yeah. So, what are the misconceptions uh, okay. that that exist as far as chemistry is concerned? Um, often people think um, like it's of, it's almost like mathematics, where mm -hmm. people already assume they know nothing about it and mm -hmm. it's too hard for them and they can't do it. Okay. Um, and um, I don't know. Maybe it's. I, I would I would say it's a misconception. Yeah. <laughs> I would say it's a misconception. Um, like with mathematics, people are often very scared to approach mathematics, and mm -hmm. um, often because they had very bad experiences in school, and yes. often because they didn't have a proper teacher to show yeah. them that this is actually useful and fun. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they weren't taught well. I would say there's a similar vibe with chemistry where mm -hmm. people just look at it and be like, "You do your thing. I know nothing about that. Yeah. I don't want to get involved." It's too hard. It's scary. I, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I, I would. I want. I don't want to believe that. That's true. <laughs> okay. I think chemistry mm -hmm. can be very exciting. Yeah. Uh, you just have to find some, something in there that mm -hmm. find that catches your interest. Um, yeah. Even if you just read an article about it mm -hmm. uh, surrounding chemistry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, I just want to ask as well. Um, yes. You know, in your in your in in your undergrad, um, I think. Um, the theory was a bit of a, you know, um, in your gray area as to how am I exactly going to apply this? You know, I know I've learned about a mm. lot of things. I've learned about Schrodinger equation. I've learned about a number of things, right? Yeah. Uh, but um, now in your PhD, do you know exactly as to how you will apply the knowledge that you have received, you know, into the workplace? Um, yes and no. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, say, I say yes because... Yes, I can totally see how mm -hmm. the knowledge that I have, yes. um, I, I developed skills over the years that I can mm -hmm. definitely use in, in industry. And, and if, you, if you just look at companies and what they do, like say you look at a pharmaceutical company yes. that develops, um, mm -hmm. uh, produces medicine, mm -hmm. I clearly have the skills to work at a company like that and yes. make a difference. Mm -hmm. But also say no, because what you learn in university um, it's often not the same as you learn as what you do in industry. Yes. Um, you learn a lot of skills, but once you get into industry, mm -hmm. things are completely different. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. I think we are just wrapping up now. Okay. It's um, time up. Sorry. Yes. You know what I'm saying. Okay. So I just wanted, I wanted to ask, um, what was your response then to to failure and disappointment in university in general? Uh, um, well, like your sort of your coping mechanism. Yeah. My my coping mechanism. <laughs> Well, it was always my my uh, uh, my faith, mm -hmm. um, and but also running and singing, mm -hmm. <laughs> like going home, taking a run, 
that's the way that I coped or mm -hmm. playing guitar and singing it's the way that I coped mm -hmm. but mostly it was my faith it was the mm -hmm. thing that um, that I had this value system yes. which I based all of my life on mm -hmm. um, that has proven to be true mm -hmm. for years and years I could really always go back to that set yes. of values mm -hmm. um, because yeah if you, as a young person you have to figure out what your values are because you don't exactly. do that someone else is going to do it for you mm -hmm. and you're just going to live by what everyone else dictates you mm -hmm. to live by and so yeah. I had this set of values things that I believed in to be core mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, that was what motivated me to always wow. go back to those values ask myself yes. why uh, why why am I doing what I'm doing mm -hmm. um, um, so it's a very sh short I get broad you. Broad answer to your question. I get you. So lastly now, Daiki, um, I just want you to... I'm looking at the youth in South Africa, um, yeah. the youth in Africa, you know, outside Africa, you know what? Can you say to the youth, just in general, you know? Okay. This yeah. one is not scripted, it's just you. What do you want to say to the world? What do you want to say to the youth? Sure. So this is your moment. I want to emphasize this this value thing. Um, not talking about faith necessarily mm -hmm. um, for me it was obviously connected to my faith in God but but it's more it's more general than that as well it's it's a thing of uh, from young age you need to decide you want you need to make up your mind as to who do I want to be in 10 20 30 40 years what is it that I want to live for who am I what, what am I gonna do with my life if you don't make those decisions early on then um, some then you will just follow the trend Yes, or yes, yes. you will follow what your parents says or your community says or um, if you haven't figured that out you're just going to go with the flow yeah. <laughs> and um, often the flow is not the direction you want to go in um, because often the flow means you end up staying in poverty often, often the flow means you also end up having broken home broken up parents and broken relationships yes. often the flow you don't want to stay in the flow you need to decide early on we don't want to be in 20 years. We don't want to be in 30 years. <laughs> and what is the values that will carry me through? Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. Wow. That's, um, what else do I want to say? Um, yeah, it's it's not always easy. It is it is difficult, but mm -hmm. it's also it's often those those small steps, those small things that you're doing right, mm -hmm. like spending that extra 20 minutes to study, or like cultivating that relationship that yeah. might be important for you. It's often being just faithful in little things that you don't even think is significant, and doing that consistently. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I can, you know, I can just, I can, I can say that that, that mm -hmm. really brings you far. <laughs> and often, because often it feels hopeless. Like you think, um, um, yeah, you know, I've got such a long way to go, and yeah. <laughs> I, I'm in such a deep hole. I'm not going to get out of this. Yes. But just having that conversation with the professor, taking that leap of faith, and you know. Those small steps, they actually they matter. Wow. <laughs> and last point, I'll make this quick. Yeah. But the last point I want to say is often it's also not it's not just about you. Mm -hmm. um, because if you can get yourself out of that hole, the next generation is better off. <laughs> wow. And if you can get if you can get yourself out of that hole, then you're sending uh, uh, the next your your children's children's children, yeah. you're setting them up for a better life. Yes. Uh, it's not that you're just setting yourself up for a better life, mm -hmm. it's about uh, starting a new a completely new tradition you know um, because if i can get myself out of that hole i am setting my children up for a better life and i'm setting the whole genealogy from there for they on forward up for a better life so that's something to keep in mind because it's much yes. bigger than just yourself yes so. yes yes wow thank you so much thank you so much um that was very informative and um we really really appreciate your willingness to come and you know, impact the lives of young people, those who want to study chemistry, um, those who are actually coming to university for the first time next year. So thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. It's a pleasure. <laughs>